Good morning to all of you. Uh, let me begin with a safety note. Stay home, stay safe, take care of yourself, take care of your parents, grandparents, your relatives, and of course, the community. Uh, I'm sure all of you are uh, learning the online uh, classes which our department uh, faculty are uh, posting audio and uh, the PowerPoint slides. Read, recall, review are three things you need to follow, otherwise you forget. It's not just mechanically submitting the assignment. I'll just show you a picture now. I'm sure there are four pictures in this slide. What can you make out? The first one, there's a cute boy here, maybe aged around five or six. He's so dirty, right? Still cute. Why is, it, why is he so dirty? Very fact that he's having a brush or a broom in his hand, a brush. Says he's involved in some work. No, where all this, his face and body, everything is covered with a black, probably suit particle. Okay. So the next picture, if you see, it is the house with chimney. Below that, you can see all your houses now, now have electrical chimney. So you don't have those uh, chimneys at all. And the last picture you can see, a nice house, again with chimney. So why this exhausted chimney required? You no, know, we all used to, when we were children, food was being uh, cooked using uh, firewood. Otherwise, many of these houses, you know, they have an exhaust because uh, they use, they burn charcoal or firewood for keeping themselves warm. So what does it produce? Burning of this firewood and charcoal, lot of soot particles. So don't you think the chimney gets clogged? Yes. It has to be cleaned. How to clean it? So they were using this. Children, they were sent through this chimneys that you are seeing to clean all those soot particles and all that which were stuck there. Then what am I talking to you today? It's just a revision and trying about uh, these videos which you were uh, asking for. Just the historical aspects, Dr. Rajeshri has uh, shared the PPT and even the voice over the recording about this topic. So. Only few topics I, uh, I just want to uh, make you people remember. So, I've just started today. You're going to know about chimney sweeps cancer. You know about it. This is again a revision. Then about the radium girls, the smoked foods. And certain uh, terminologies to recall and aflatoxins I'll be taking next. So, these chimney sweeps. So they were hired young boys. This was in 18th century in Europe. So they were generally, you saw that cute boy there. They're generally orphans or children from very poor families. Otherwise, who would allow their child to enter into this chimney to clean? Don't you think they get suffocated also? So they chose children who were orphans, who were from very poor uh, family and who were quite small also, so that they could climb inside, go into that uh, tunnel-like thing and brush it. So they were just four to seven years old. So often these children were sent with minimal clothes, or sometimes these children are naked also, or just with a trouser and uh, uh, shirt. That means their skin was exposed to the chimney suit. So in England, at that time, there was no law regulating the child labor. So that was the problem to remove this. So, so what happened? So the many of these children slept there on those uh, 
in in their working places not in the chimney in their working places and they really did not bathe the daily clean themselves and all that so this work was so dangerous that uh, they could really get jammed there get suffocated or burn to death also and on the on those soot sacks only they just slept many days. so the soot started accumulating on the skin so it was possible what you have seen his picture i put this picture again who found an association between exposure to soot and then high incidence of carcinoma scrotal cancer in these children who grew up in their puberty or adult life so he called it as chimney sweeps cancer so this was what can we call this as occupational cancer probably the first occupational cancer okay so where because this, probably the rugosity of the skin of the scrotum all these particles were uh, getting accumulated there and it produced a superficial painful ill looking maybe a nodule or ulcerated lesion with raised edges that is as they grew when they when they became adolescents so it was quite uh, painful and then this came it came to attention okay now we have heard a name here that is about percival pot who was he percival pot was an english uh, surgeon he was uh, um, the founder of orthopedics and he was the first scientist to demonstrate that a uh, cancer may be caused by an environmental carcinogen so when we talk about possible people we have to remember other things have you heard of pots fracture what does it affect which bone it's a break to the in the lateral or medial uh, side of the malleoli pots puffy tumor a very rare clinical entity characterized by subperiosteal abscess and osteomyelitis then pots disease we have taught you this during a session on uh, tuberculosis tuberculosis of the spine then this could be called as pots cancer of the scrotum so this is about uh, possible pot so we should know that you know some of the books say that every anything and everything under the sun including the sun himself is carcinogenic see we are uh, definitely swimming in an ocean of uh, carcinogens so now next is uh, about so yes then what are these carcinogens we have brought in an entity called as carcinogen here we said suit as the carcinogenic because suit produced carcinom of the scrotum so carcinogens are causative agents for generation of neoplasia whose origin nature and identity are unequivocally clarified so they may exhibit tissue specificity also but it is any substance or agent that causes cancer so now what is the carcinogen that was present in the suit it was coal tar thought to be coal tar probably containing uh, some arsenic and these patients uh, uh, who were involved in this work and so they really uh, they delayed seeking uh, medical opinion and when they did when they went so it was already a dreadful state okay so now there is another picture for you here what do you see in the picture you know radium as children i am sure all of you would have loved to have radium stickers and all that what is catchy here can you see an alarm time piece with radium dial yes can you see this beautiful girls and they called as radium girls 
what are they doing so they they engaged in some fine work that is painting the watch dial so how should the brush be when we have to paint this digits it has to be very delicate so if you want to sharpen the tip of the brush what do we do of course probably you may dip it in little water and then make the tip pointed with your fingers okay you know how many of you know to thread the needle you were doing it you know um, so easily and uh, school days we had this competition also threading the needle so who does it first so when we want to thread a needle so we want the thread to be having a sharp pointed end it should be stiff otherwise the stick otherwise the thread you know how uh, uh, bent it would be or how loose it would be so we wanted it to be pointed and stiff every time we were putting it in the mouth and then making it pointed using the fingers and we know nothing should be put in the mouth even you know putting your uh, saliva and turning the pages and all that this was banned for us parents used to scold us doing all this and now you know how infective it is after all this infectious diseases and the viruses how they are being transmitted yeah so this is what you know they these workers look at that lady who is putting that uh, brush in her mouth just to wet it so they said radium is uh, not toxic whatever they are using and uh, they should not use water because quite a costly radium they were using and uh, in water it gets diluted so whatever whatever is required just to make the tip point it was very very little so they said you can just put it in the mouth and do it see so sad so this paint was harmless they said so they could put it in the lips or just you know touch it touch with the saliva what they were using was radium powdered radium gum arabic and water so some also it is so fascinating when we look at this radium in uh, the dark right so some of these uh, ladies uh, they wanted to beautify their uh, probably fingernails also so they were applying this on the fingernail and face and teeth also you know the glowing that uh, probably they enjoyed looking at the glowing areas in dark so subsequently this was again an occupational related uh, toxicity so they ingested deadly amounts of radium and uh, over a period of time they didn't know what it was actually so about 112 of these uh, radium girls died due to high levels of uh, radium so then they started investigating to know why these girls were okay. so they were they were they were quite grown uh, grown up after that uh, so they were quite old then so ingesting radium containing paint was the reason and uh, ingested radium they said was excreted also and uh, they didn't know about whether it was radiation or uh, the effects what caused uh, uh, their death and all that and it was the isotope uh, 22228 that was used for radium for painting and then later this practice was banned okay now we know the hazards of high exposure to ionizing radiation and uh, all these workers they had uh, decay of their teeth and then malignancy that was related to this was osteosarcoma and even uh, the nasal and the mastoid nasal nasal and the mastoid tumors so small amount of this radium was deposited in the reticuloendothelial system and bone 
and there was toxicity also. They developed anemia, bone fractures, necrosis of the jaw. You know, they called it as radium jaw. Probably they said uh, they were over investigated also. Uh, exposure to x-ray that also might have contributed so all this okay so this is about uh, the radium girls now we have seen two occupational uh, related uh, malignancies right okay let's talk about another uh, uh, carcinogen smoked food no no non-vegetarian food like uh, meat and all I think uh, Probably they're tasty when we smoke them, cook them in uh, uh, smoke using uh, wood smoke that is firewood or charcoal. That is it's cooked under or open flame or grill and all that. So smoked food, it's, it's just like uh, the cigarette smoke. We say with the burning of the paper that releases this polycyclic uh, hydrocarbons right so it's the same heterocyclic amines of the polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons that are uh, there in the smoked food so the process of smoking causes carcinogens to form in food burning so i remember when we were children even uh, we were eating this uh, uh, jackfruit seeds you know, burning them sometimes very vaguely i, I remember you know, my friends who were eating uh, this tamarind seeds also that used to be like uh, burnt, cooked, I should say, not uh, uh, this thing. So in uh, uh, using this firewood or where we use the firewood and uh, uh, charcoal and all for heating uh, water, for boiling water, for uh, uh, taking bath. So they were putting it in that uh, uh, burning uh, wood. So it used to be very tasty. So you can see the smoked uh, food has a black coating on that. That is the suit. And uh, dietary food or a, a diet which is high in salty and smoked food produces carcinoma of the stomach. So this is one thing we should uh, remember about uh, carcinoma of the stomach. So polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. So the process of smoking causes carcinogens to form in the food. So traditional uh, smoking technique. Now nobody uses this. No, many Everybody has gas cylinders and all that firewood and all is not used at all for uh, cooking and let alone for uh, uh, why do they use it? Cooking meat or anything. So probably when you go to jungle or forest and you find something you catch an animal, then there you may burn the same, you know, prepare cooked meat using uh, uh, this. So heterocyclic uh, amines, how are they formed? Pretty interesting. They formed when the amino acids, you know, so amino acids, that is the building blocks of proteins that are there in the meat, the sugars and creatinine and uh, creatinine substances which are found in the muscle. So they react at high temperatures heterocyclic uh, amines are formed. Then polycyclic aromatic uh, hydrocarbons, they form when the fat that is there in the uh, meat, the fat and the juices uh, uh, from the meat, you know, they're grilled directly over a heated uh, surface or uh, open fire. So they drip onto the surface of the fire causing flames and smoke. So what does it cause? Carcinoma of the stomach. You can see the picture here, smoke uh, uh, meat on one side and a carcinoma of the stomach on the other. Look at that uh, carcinoma. How is it? You know to define or you know to describe a malignant ulcer. So it is quite large and uh, can make out the averted rolled out edges of the ulcer. So chronic gastric ulcer would be very small one it's a nice punched out also we say it's got a clean floor so floor is what we can see here you can make out there is necrosis and hemorrhage whereas there it is because of peptic digestion it, it would be very clean and the 
ulcer size is small and it's a punched out ulcer there so here it is it's got rolled out margins okay so dictum here related to carcinoma stomach you should remember cancer ulcerates that means a carcinoma ulcer produces ulcer ulcer rarely cancerates that is peptic ulcer becoming malignant or seeing a carcinomatous change in you know, a peptic ulcer is very very rare so ulcer or you can say cancer ulcerates ulcer rarely cancerates so if you learn all this so many things that are carcinogen you don't feel like eating anything right so next is nitrosamines and nitrites and nitrates the intake of these dietary which increases the risk of get gastric cancer so where are these nitrosamines so they are the common by by products of this nitrates and nitrites so they occur naturally in fruits fruits vegetables but important is they are used they they present in a large quantity in foods which are processed because they are added as additives such as meat or bacon sausages hot dogs and all that because they want to retard the microbial proliferation so they add uh, this and uh, it preserves the appearance also and the flavor of uh, the food so lot of uh, these nitrites and nitrates are uh, added and the nitrosamines are uh, produced by the chemical reactions of nitrates and nitrites and other proteins also so it is n nitroso dimethyl amine that is the most frequently occurring uh, nitrosamines in the dietary food it is a potent carcinogen so just look at this uh, slide you can make out nitrosamines are also present in fish beer fried foods meats tobacco smoke and uh, there is so many there are more than uh, uh, 300 nitroso uh, compounds that are known to, known to be carcinogenic so this picture if you just see I've, I've just taken from the net you can make out and uh, we need to prevent it also no to prevent how do we prevent the consumption of this minimize eating processed food eat fresh foods as far as possible and uh, also whenever you buy all this please check the labels and look for what is the content that is present so i avoid all this products of uh, products that list sodium or uh, potassium nitrate nitrites and all that and of course the antioxidants as uh, uh, it is shown in that slide vitamin c vitamin e and flavonoids it doesn't mean that you consume this and take uh, antioxidant oxidants but uh, as far as possible try to avoid this which is recoil some of the carcinogens one is we have learned about chimney sweeps cancer then we know about the radium girls now there is the, the later no, there were there was law which was enforced and uh, all these were banned and all that okay so then about the food we know the smoked food and the nitrites and the nitrates so how dangerous they are okay so i'll just continue this is just a trial that uh, Uh, i wanted to take up uh, so if you are comfortable with uh, this i can continue in a similar way otherwise uh, we'll follow there are so many modalities uh, for online teaching but uh, we need to follow what uh, the college you know advocates and uh, rjhs also has told us to adapt some of the online uh, methodologies or uh, uh, whatever is uh, they are providing us so we'll see you but uh, hope you have recalled whatever you had learned in the previous class of 
chemical carcinogens. This is just a trial. I am going to put up another video shortly. Thank you.